As you know, over the last several weeks, the conversation at Bradley University is uh, we're our budget's in uh, in crisis. We got thirteen million dollars we need to cut uh, to cut rather. President Stanford's on the phone. Good to see you, sir. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. I know these have been trying times Good. for you and your staff and and everyone at Bradley. And so the final uh, cuts were announced. Uh, last week, and we never had a chance to really uh, visit with you at that point, so we wanted to catch up. How are you feeling today about it? You know, I feel like we're where we need to be. Obviously, none of this has been pleasant for anybody involved, but it it moves us in the right direction, and I feel confident about the direction we're headed. Well, uh, my question is, uh, going before you, and I don't want to beat up on anyone, uh, wasn't there anyone overlooking all of this and seeing this coming 10 years ago? You know, it's interesting. This is, I'm going to speak about the industry as a whole. This is a dynamic that's been happening in higher ed. And I think your timing is good. It's been about 10 years that this has been bubbling. But change is just really difficult in higher education. It's not something that we're used to doing. It's not something we've had to do in the past. So you can look across the industry and say these are changes that should have been made at a lot of different places. And now it's time to do it. And so what is the final number of folks who are going to lose their jobs? What was that final number? Yeah, so it ends up being uh, 65 people actively, 65 positions. Okay. Uh, being 42, uh, to go back and look at the numbers exactly. I believe it's 42 individuals specifically who are currently in positions. And we will work with them in transition. And one of the things I'm reinforcing is nobody's, everybody's here with us through this, through this academic year, through okay. May. And then in some cases, to make sure that we can complete the teach out for our students, uh, we'll continue some of those contracts a little bit longer. And when you say teach out, that means so a student has, is majoring in something that would be affected by this. They'll be able to complete that. Just no new students would start that. Absolutely. Our commitment okay. to every student is if you are studying here at a particular major and you want to finish it here at Bradley, you can do that. And that's something we're committed to doing. What is the trend right now? I know you talked about this last week, but what is the trend with enrollment generally not just at bradley but across the industry as you just mentioned yeah so it's an interesting time to be in higher ed. there's a lot of pressure on enrollment and, and actually there's two things that are really causing the challenges that we see today one of them is the enrollment that is an actual factor uh you see that more in the in the private schools are probably feeling that pressure more than the public school the public schools uh seem to be doing a little bit better the other issue is what we call the tuition discount, and that is the amount of aid students expect today relative to what they used to expect. And then when you start doing that, that's what really has flipped the finances upside down in much of the industry. Explain that a little bit more. Uh, so so, so yeah. uh, uh, we're expecting more me, as I've told you many times on this show and, and privately when yeah. I see you. Uh, we're looking at uh, college for our last child. Bradley's on the short list. And, and so we, right. we as parents and families are looking for more help than we used to? That's exactly right. Okay. And part of that comes from an industry that's, that, quite frankly, we have a bunch, as an industry, probably about, that's how you measure, about 25% excess capacity. And when you have that excess capacity, one of the things that many schools are tempted to do is to give deep discounts in order to fill those seats. And when they do that, it puts pressure on the entire industry. Yeah, it does. Uh, yeah, because the money's got to come from somewhere eventually. Correct. So yep. uh, as we move forward, uh, I know this question, you, you didn't do this, but some of the folks on the other side of this conversation were feeling that academics was pay, it was taking the full brunt. And I guess what the unspoken, uh, maybe they did speak it and I just didn't hear it, was uh, yeah. how come athletics didn't uh, take some deep cuts? What is your response to that? So it's interesting. See, if you look at uh, how we run the university across the board, including athletics, uh, we have been aggressive about addressing those costs throughout the year. By the way, we did do some cuts earlier in the summer. If you go back, there were a number of positions that were uh, not filled and some positions, quite frankly, that were, were vacated uh, earlier in the year. So we've been doing that as well. The other thing that I would argue specifically if you look at athletics, uh, we have – what I would describe as one of the best-run athletic departments in the country, and that's because of an outstanding uh, VP of, of athletics, uh, Chris Reynolds, Dr. Chris Reynolds. Right. And one of the things that we often hear people talk about is uh, what about athletics. This conversation comes up a lot. So one of the things I did earlier this year is had our marketing group do a calculation of something called ad equivalency. What's the amount of – if we were to go out and buy advertisements for the amount of media coverage we get for athletics – what would that equate to? 
The average over the last three years has been $21.3 million. Our athletics program is a window into the university. It really puts a spotlight on who we are. Yeah. And uh, it has value in so many different ways, but just from an ad equivalency, the value is quite significant. And, and I, will, I will, as an example, uh, correct me if I'm wrong on this because you come from here, but years ago when Butler University, something you know very well, uh, oh, yeah. A, a, yeah. A Butler University, was well, just, you know, they're nice, they're doing some things, and then, bam, their basketball program Played for the national championship. blew yeah. up. Yeah. And, yeah. and as a result, that school exploded. And, and so the, I'm yep. sorry to some people that seems weird, but it does work that way, right? It does. And what you can look at, you can look at, actually, an example goes even later, than, earlier than that, is Duke. Duke had the same phenomenon. Yeah, yeah. And Duke, in both yeah. those cases where those schools came on and suddenly had these strong, recognizable programs, you see a stepwise increase in the number of applicants for those schools that in both cases has never really dropped. Yeah. Well, and another thing I would say, compared to a state school, you have, I don't know, what, 150, 200 athletes on the men's and women's yeah. side that wouldn't come here without some sort of athletics. You know, that's a great comment. That's a great observation because we bring students here because of athletics. And the other thing, is the student success. If you look at our overall GPA, you look at the graduation rates for our students in athletics, it's phenomenal, much better than the university as a whole. And it's, they really do a great job of creating an amazing student experience. We have a lot to learn from them on how we do that well. You know, and now looking into the future, I think Bradley's on the cutting edge when it comes to gaming. Oh, the interactive yeah. media. Interactive huge, media. Yeah. Yeah. Um so that kind of separates you and makes you one of the few schools who are offering that as a major. And, of course, that the, the whole technical side of things when it comes to video and advertising and everything is where, is where the world is headed. And uh, have you thought about other majors that you could oh. develop that, that's not currently offered to get people here? Absolutely. So it's, it's a great observation because it's a key part of our overall strategy. This isn't, this is about rethinking how we meet the needs and interests of today's students. So it's partly identifying programs that are an important part of our legacy, not going to be part of who we are moving forward, but also identifying new programs. One that came out recently is we have a cybersecurity program that is actually recognized as a National Center for Academic Excellence in wow. Cyberspace by the National Security Agency. Uh, it's a relatively new program. It's hot. Uh, one of the areas I want to see us do more in is the area of AI, for example. And so this is really about thinking how we restructure ourselves to really make sure we're really tapping into and satisfying what it is that today's students need in their educational experience. Well, uh, we appreciate your ability uh, and your uh, openness to be on this show, not ability, your openness to be on our show and talk about this, <laughs> yeah. because it's a, it's a hard yeah. conversation. It's, it's been a hard conversation uh, for yeah. everyone involved, and no one wants those things to to be bad they don't we i know i know that so we appreciate yeah. your time however we do have something completely unrelated to ask you yeah <laughs> okay. are, are you ready this is I'm, you, I'm you excited, have to, nervous about that you sure, should absolutely. you should be extremely <laughs> nervous about this so okay. years ago years ago we approached the athletic department because dan and i thought it would be fun to do a greg and dan show moment at a bradley game where we yeah. took one of the T-shirt guns and we fired Avanti's gondolas into the audience, and I, appro <laughs> I, <laughs> I okay. approached I approached the athletic department and was without a doubt told no immediately because of insurance yeah, yeah. problems, and I said yep. okay fine that's fine that's fine <laughs> now now we've announced just a couple of weeks ago the Civic Center that Avanti's has a a restaurant on site and people are enjoying the oh, delicious great. gondola yeah. during the game. Yeah. So we're going, I'm just, get, I'm just giving you this heads up really. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. We're going to approach uh, the athletic department again. Uh, Dr. Reynolds doesn't know it's coming yeah. and we're going to call him and say, Hey, we want to shoot gondolas well, into the audience. You know, <laughs> and Bradley is a, maybe a great yeah. engineering school. Yes. Maybe the engineering yeah. Yeah. students can, can make figure specific... out how to make it safer. Yeah. Either we wrap it in a T-shirt or right. something, but we, right. we will find a way yeah, to shoot do six inch we're gondolas gonna, we're into the get crowd. We're going to get it done, sir. Yeah. Okay? Okay. Just... I was going to say you should hand out gondolas, but if no. you want to shoot them, we'll have to work on that a little no, bit. No, no, no. <laughs> Come on, Dr. Stanford. <laughs> Handing out's no fun. Yeah. We want to we yeah. see if we can like injure somebody. That's what we're trying to do. <laughs> Somewhere my chief risk officer is <laughs> yeah. going, oh, no. <laughs> yes, <please. laughs> right, have a good Christmas. Thank you for your time.
Thank you, you too. All Thank right, you. so long. That's Dr. Still Stanford. safe. We wrap right, him in a T-shirt. Let me tell you something. I don't know that guy very well, but that sounded like a guy who liked that idea. He did. He that's he's in. Yeah. He's in. He just knows he can't be in. Yeah, he can't, he can't it. say it. He publicly. can't say it publicly, but he likes that idea. Yes, he's he a does. fun guy. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. that would make ESPN. Yes, a cr- recruitment tool. Yes. Recruitment tool. Go yeah. to the school. Yeah. Go to the school where they shoot sandwiches at you. <laughs> I'll tell you what we should do. We'll just do it on the quad. We don't even have to do it at a game. Yeah. We just walk around the quad. <laughs> Nobody can stop us from Out doing one that. One of the third floor. Windows. No, just walking around. Boom. Just fire sandwiches at people. See, my my uh, my idea is if you shoot it. At the right trajectory, yeah. it'll soften the projectile. I agree with you. It'll land softly. Yes. Yeah, you can't you can't shoot it to the guy sitting no. in the front. You can't hit Mark Scott with him. <laughs> right. Who's in the front row. You gotta go up a row. you gotta go yeah. up lower bowl. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 upper I mean upper bowl but the lower part. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You're hundred yeah. percent right. Okay. That nonsense aside, thank you, Dr. Stanford, for the serious part of that conversation. We do appreciate it.